Hello there, and welcome to Pets Aplenty. Today on the channel, you'll learn about the Stabihoon, a gentle pet that is tolerant, friendly, and willing to please. As always, we've gathered all this information to help you make an informed decision if you are drawn to this beautiful dog. Before we continue, though, we would love for you to become a member of the channel by clicking on the Join button down below. You can also review the perks of Pets Aplenty membership after clicking the Join button. Now, let's get into the video, starting with the breed's history. The Stabihoon was first mentioned in texts from the 19th century. However, the breed was traced back to the Netherlands in the 17th century through images of dogs that resembled the present breed in centuries-old Dutch paintings. The breed is from Friesland, more precisely from the southeast and eastern Frisian woodland region. The Stabihoon and the small Munsterlander, in the opinion of many historians, are closely connected. A group of admirers of the Stabihoon joined the Kyle Logan Club Friesland in 1938 and started the process of purifying the Stabihoon. The Kynologen Club Friesland conferred formal recognition on the Stabihoon in 1942. In 1944, the Stabihoon's first official breed standard was approved. In 1947, the Dutch Association for Weatherhoons and Stabihoons was founded. His other ancestors most likely arrived in the Netherlands during the Northern Spanish Conquest. These canines were used for various agricultural tasks as well as for hunting. They also have devoted friends. The Stabihoon was often crossed with the Wetterhoon, another Dutch breed, up to the 20th century. But beginning in the middle of the 20th century, breeders established unique criteria for each breed. The first Stabihoons were born in the United States in 1994. Although it's not yet a recognized breed, it is a member of the American Kennel Club's Foundation Stock Service. Appearance the Frisian Pointer is a medium-sized, semi-long-haired dog that stands an average of 21 inches at the withers and 23 inches at the withers or around 90 to 20 inches at the shoulder. At 8 weeks old, the Frisian Pointer pup typically weighs between 7 to 8 pounds, reaching their maximum size between 12 and 15 months later. The Stabihoon's medium-length silky coat is black, brown, and orange with white patterns. It has feathers around the chest, belly, legs, and tail. Its head is slightly longer, and its drop ears are long and have some feathering. A casual observer would mistake his considerable feathering for long hair, although this is not an advantage. Temperament the Stabihoon is an uncommon breed seen outside of the Netherlands. Although he is a self-reliant, energetic dog, he can be loving with his family. He gets along well with kids and cats, but because of his high hunt drive, it's never a good idea to let smaller animals, like ferrets and guinea pigs, alone with him. The Stabihoon makes an excellent security dog and will bark if any intruders get too close. He may sometimes be labeled as obstinate and does want to get his way. He may be a little wary of strangers. Therefore, it's crucial to socialize him from a young age to prevent him from developing a fear of people in unfamiliar circumstances. He should get teaching from everyone in the family to know who is in charge and become a well-rounded dog. Socialization to socialize the puppy, you should introduce him to as many new things as possible, including people, places, sounds, and textures. It would help if you exposed him to various situations, places, and people. The goal of puppy socialization is to gradually expose your new pet to new experiences, including new people, places, and things. A dog that has been adequately socialized will not be afraid of children or automobile rides. Because of this, they will have a better chance of growing up to be a polite, joyful friend. A dog's longevity may depend on how well-adjusted and self-assured it is. Improper socialization might result in behavioral issues later in life. According to the group's official stance on socializing, canine mortality rates are higher due to behavioral problems than infectious ailments. Once your vet gives the all-clear, begin bringing your dog on public outings so they may learn appropriate behavior in social circumstances and develop a fondness for meeting new people. Your breeder will initiate early socializing, as previously described. Right. Grooming the Stabihound's medium-length coat is self-cleaning, meaning dirt slips off on its own when it's dry. For this reason, grooming requirements for a Stabihound are not demanding. Brushing regularly will maintain the coat tangle-free and reduce shedding. It is wise to anticipate increased shedding twice a year, usually in the spring and autumn. During these times, you'll need to brush more regularly. Pay careful attention to feathered regions of the coat since these may get tangled more readily. Baths are optional as they can destroy the sleekness of the coat. So, 
only give your stay behind a bath with dog shampoo when he has gotten into stinky places. However, examine its ears at least once a week to determine whether they need cleaning. Check to see whether its nails need to be trimmed once a month and preferably wash its teeth once a day with canine toothpaste. Exercise your stabies' mental and physical health depends on regular exercise. They need a decent hour of exercise every day. It's a good idea to let the dog out for walks, jogs, treks, and even swimming laps to burn off some energy. For this intelligent breed, adequate cerebral stimulation is just as crucial. A bored stabie hound may start acting out problematic habits such as uncontrollable gnawing or digging. Stabies must have a purpose in everyday life, and variety-oriented activities should be prioritized. Your Stabi may benefit and be stimulated by lure coursing, agility hunting, scent training, and hunting. Providing puzzle toys may keep your dog content all day. Dog sports are another fantastic way to emotionally and physically challenge your dog. Always remember that an ideal dog is active. Training the Stabie is eager to please and learns quickly with kind and encouraging training. To inculcate excellent manners and stop undesirable behaviors from arising, try to start training and socializing your dog as a puppy. Stabie hound often react well to training methods that include positive reinforcement, such as sweets and compliments. If you're overly strict, they can stop listening to you and stop trying to learn. Under excessive pressure is never a good idea, but a competent coach is crucial. Additionally, start early to introduce your Stabie hound to various people, canines, and environments. Positivity increases a dog's comfort level with strangers. Although it exhibits considerable caution around strangers, this breed typically gets along well with children and other dogs. Diet and Nutrition the Stabiehound should thrive on high-quality dog food, whether commercial or homemade, under the direction and agreement of your veterinarian. Certain dogs need specific meals depending on their age, amount of exercise, and other variables. Discover which foods fit the bill for canine consumption and which don't. All diets must be suitable for the dog's age. Watch your dog's weight level and calorie intake since certain dogs are prone to obesity. Keep an eye on treats and other food to stop your dog from overeating and putting on too much weight. Treats may be a valuable training tool, but offering them in excess might lead to obesity. You should also make sure your dog always has access to fresh water. See your veterinarian if you have any worries about your dog's weight or nutrition. Health Despite its limited number, the Stabihoon is a highly healthy breed. However, it is susceptible to certain illnesses. Responsible breeders examine their stock for epilepsy, hip and elbow dysplasia, patent ductus, arteriosus, and brain dysfunction. The ASA's breeding program aims to limit these incidences as much as possible, but it won't be easy since the reasons are not always evident or genetic. For a long time, the Dutch have been working to eradicate hip dysplasia by prohibiting club members from breeding dogs exhibiting any symptoms of the condition. Taking your dog to a veterinarian is vital for monitoring its health and keeping overall sound health. Do you agree with our take on veterinarian visits? Let us know in the comments section below. Consider becoming a member of our channel by clicking the join button to get early access to our upcoming videos plus other membership perks. Also, check out our playlists and click on the video links that pop up at the end of this video. Thank you for watching.